Hello, folks. It is time for me to finally do a video that I've been planning on doing and promising on doing for a little while. A little video on coaching and what coaches do in the Smite Pro League, or at least what I think they do, what I used to do, and uh, what some other coaches who I've chatted to have said they do also. So um before we get into it i guess thank you to biggie and Row. i chatted to biggie and Row around uh what they felt their roles were and i kind of looked at what they said and how that aligned with what i did i also wanted to get a little bit of extra knowledge from them on um sort of conflict resolution type stuff because that's not something that i had to do a whole lot of in my career as a coach i was just kind of blessed with teams where I didn't have to step in too much and, and resolve issues between players, but I know that both of those guys have been in situations where they've had to do that. So I wanted to get a bit of info from them on that as it's something that I think is done a lot by coaches, but not something that I've done so much. Um, but yeah, it's going to be, this will be like a mess of a video as always, you know, I could have edited this together and made some nice, um, <clears throat> but it, like I've done some nice things with the different bits and pieces I'm going to show you, but honestly, um, I'm just shit at editing, so I don't want to do that. I take way too much time for the payoff. Uh, so I'm just going to show you some stuff in my browser uh, and walk through kind of how I felt, what I felt the main roles and the main responsibilities of coaches are, and uh, hopefully give some people some better ideas of you know what's actually going on, what the responsibilities are, and what's expected of coaches. So this is this is why I'm making this, by the way. Hopefully you can see this okay. Uh, but this was a comment I got from Brad on one of my videos a few weeks ago, maybe maybe a couple of months ago now, uh, or one month ago, there you go. Uh, maybe it's because of the limited knowledge we have of the coaching process in Smite, but it seems like a bit of an obsolete role. The players have a pretty good idea on picks and bans and can develop strategies by themselves, it seems. Maybe you can talk about your role as a coach on a future Havering. And here I am doing it finally. Um, obviously a lot of people Oh, this was a good idea. I got 27 thumbs up. So hopefully this is something you think will be useful. I'm just going to kind of walk through the different bits and pieces that a coach does, maybe like from the start of a week to the end of the week. Um, and starting off, I mean, the first thing coaches do, I guess I'll go back to full screen for a little bit before I've got stuff to show you. So the first thing that coaches do is they are responsible for organizing scrims on most teams. So You've got to book scrims against, normally you speak to other coaches, you book scrims for that week against the best practice you can get ideally, uh, and ideally against teams who you're not playing in the next couple of game weeks. So that's that. Coaches, at least when I was competing, were pretty bad at this. A lot of, uh, a lot of people would keep their schedule for the week in like a bloody Google Doc instead of using a calendar and uh, would double book and things like that and then get publicly shamed on Twitter for double booking, which was always good fun. Um, but people did make a mess of, of, of this aspect a lot of the times. I kind of wish like for the SPL right now, they should have like a shared, I hope they're all using a calendar now and not using like a page on a Google spreadsheet. I don't know if I have one, an, an old one somewhere. Um, it doesn't look like I do. I think I've got access to one of my old sheets that I found it's probably got data up to season five, I think, in it. Um, so I'm going to show you guys a little bit of that. Well, I'll show you it just now. In fact, the yeah, organizing scrims was a big part. Was it was not a big part, but that was a part of a coach's responsibility. And then going into the week of scrims, this is what I felt was the most important part of my job as a coach. I'm not sure if other coaches feel the same. I would imagine they do. And it's not. I think a lot of the time the fans see the picks and ban side of things and the actual on the day things that coaches do is the most important part of their role. I would disagree with that pretty health heavily. I think the most important part of a coach's role is just helping a team improve um, during the week and coming into your matches. So um, let's start for before scrims. So like before scrims, you're going to book scrims and uh, typically in a week, you might, maybe you're losing a lot, maybe there's a particular thing that you're struggling with and you wanna come into scrims normally with a focus in my mind, um, something that you wanna focus on. Maybe you wanna focus on your mid 3v3, maybe you wanna focus on um, invades, maybe you wanna focus on objective play, but you wanna make something the focus of your scrims in my opinion a lot of the time, just so that the players have some gauge, some metric other than winning or losing on, uh, 
what you're getting better at. It's easy to just go into scrims and keep playing and playing and playing. And you're just kind of playing the game and not learning that much some of those times. So if you have a focus that helps out a lot, I think a coach uh, can really push that on. Um, next responsibility of a coach to help improve is keeping records of scrims. And I will show you some stuff. I'm gonna put this a link to the sheet uh, in the description. So if you wanna go have a, uh, have a look through it and see what we've got written down. Hopefully there's nothing questionable here. Um, but this is an old, old uh, copy of some full split scrims, I guess. These guys are links all linked to um, the match ID, the game. Here's us losing to SK. Christ, uh, that kind of been looking good. Um, but yeah, you would keep a record of all the games you played. Um, and after... This is what I would record during the actual set, and then I'd have a Dropbox link. These are all deleted now. I don't think I have any notes. Maybe I can find some. Uh, you know what? I should probably find some notes right now. Don't look at my... Let's see what we've got. Can I find something? Uh, scrims? Hmm. Let me see if I can find something. <laughs> this is a mess. Sorry. Scrims? No. Uh, these, uh, these are all screenshots, uh, the RTF maybe? Did it all, oh, Harry, here we go. I got some notes. These are, da -da -da -da. SPL versus PK. Okay, this is a thing. Oh God, I'm bringing it up. Let's see what is happening here. Okay, change the text to Where's the text color? Because the text color right now is the wrong color, I guess. Change it to white so we can see. Uh, oh, here we go. So this is a five game set in the SPL and these are the notes I took in that. This is all a bit of a mess, but uh, these are the kind of unstructured notes I'd take. Oh, you can't see that. Fuck me, dude, what a mess. Here you go. So these are the unstructured notes I'd take during uh, an SPL set, I guess. SPL versus PK. 25th of October 2019. So this would have been with Renegades. Five game set apparently. That went to went to all five. Um, and I just take notes of what happened in the game um, and how that affected the game. This is much more for me than for the players. I would share it to the players, but generally I would try and take these notes and distill them down into something which, you know, all this is just everything that happened in the game for each game, um, which is not useful for the players to read. Much more useful is giving them, taking the important bits of this and, and feeding that back to the players. So this is just so I don't forget what happened in the game. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Here's some old notes. This is from a few years ago, but uh, yeah, this is one thing that I always did for scrims and uh, game days. I took notes like this so that I knew what happened in games. And I would share those with the players, not really expecting them to read every single set of notes. Did we win this set? Looks like we lost it. We're noobs. God damn it. What an L. Anyway, um, let's go back to that scene from before. Sorry. I wasn't, I'm not as prepped as I, as I could have been, huh? Um, but yeah, that's what these Dropbox links would always be. The links to the notes from those particular scrims uh, that I would share with the players. And I would share them at the end of the end of the set normally for practice. Um, this is empty now, but this used to have our win rates with uh, every uh, every god pick and our win rates against every god pick in it. Um, that was just useful to see at a glance how recent results are being. I would clear this out after every split or even sometimes after like big meta changes. Um, and I Ro shared with me that he had something pretty similar to this around win rates and stuff like that that was queryable. Um, but that was useful for game day, just at a glance, seeing what you're doing well with, what you're doing well against. Um, sometimes this kind of thing will not be that useful. It's like some, sometimes you're losing scrims to certain gods, to certain picks, and you know that that's not why you lost. You know that maybe there were a troll set, maybe there was, um, you had a sub playing, blah, blah, blah. So data as a whole is not always all that useful, but this page was just a nice little UI thing. You can Anybody who wants this, by the way, you can steal it and uh, take it and use it for your own team, obviously. Um, the links will be down below. Um, so maybe if some SCC teams or something like that, they'll have this for their own team. Can be nice to have. Uh, 
Okay. Yeah. In terms of the notes I would take and the things I would focus on during scrims, um, I found that you you want to give feedback on specific things and there's certain things that you want to be able to notice as a coach. You're kind of providing... I'm not really showing you anything right now. So you're providing a level of feedback. Um, the coach's job is to give like top-down feedback, sort of unbiased feedback that the players um, struggle with because you're very focused on your own performance in a game and I think that... Uh, you often will focus on the one point in the game, the one losing fight towards the end of the game or whatever that decided the game, or losing fight in the early that decided the game. But in reality, a loss or a win comes from a lot of different decisions and a lot of different points in the game. And your job as a coach, I think, is to communicate what those moments are to your team and also to do a certain amount of like pattern matching and and, and seeing the consistent mistakes that your team makes and, and coming up with solutions for that. Um, so I'm trying to think of a good example. Renegades had a big issue with uh, rushing pushes. Often after we got FG, we would go and push the solo side Phoenix straight away, which is not a good thing to do. Typically, if you, if you end up in a 5v5 on that Phoenix, you've not spent the gold that you got from the last fight. You're not stripping all the towers off the map. And even if you do get the Phoenix, you're getting the worst one you can get, the solo side one. The closest to FG, the easiest to pull out, push out those fire minions and be able to contest the next FG. So it's just um, things like that. So when you notice a pattern like that, you say, OK, guys, this is a problem we've got. What I'm going to say is every time we get FG from now on, no matter if it's a 5v3, 5v5, 5v2, whatever, we back. We back straight after we get FG, just until we get this into our, our heads that we're not going to straight push that all the time. Or at least we have a, a conversation about it whenever we decide to push solo. Um, so that's that's the kind of thing that a coach can notice as a pattern and provide some kind of feedback uh, to the players. Um, <clears throat> What else have I got? I've got some notes here that I'm kind of following through. Recording important moments is a cool thing that some coaches do. I know that Ro, Ro shared with me a few um, a few gifts that he'd recorded of... even These are more funny moments than important team fights or anything like that. I think he just thought these would be some cool ones to share. Um, this is an epic 1v1. I think this is... Is this Maniac versus Zalia or something? I don't know. But uh, <laughs> what a 1v1. Who's going to get out? Oh, Zalia's missing everything, it looks like. Oh, the snake doesn't quite kill him. Truly, he's got the bounce. Oh, the triple bounce. It was Maniac versus Nika. What a kill. Crazy. Um, so this is the kind of thing that you would have. These are just some... Oh, so this is... So Variety was playing. Oh, Zero's killed Maniac. What a bounce. But these are just funny little moments that you could share with the team straight after scrims. But you would have more serious, uh, quick little gifts of like team fights and things like that. Oh, <laughs> someone blinked into Emil's auto there, and Emil killed them and died to the Phoenix. That's pretty funny. Who's the Anubis? Who's playing Anubis? I don't know. Um, and this one, this was something that Rose shared with me where Emil was getting really mad at Nils for not silencing Bird Bomb, but it turned out that there was like a bug with Nils, uh, Nils being a Millsy, his account his smurf account where he couldn't silence bird bombs for some reason i don't know what that was about very strange um but yeah that is these are some recorded gifts you would want to do this for like um important team fights positioning mistakes and stuff like that like if you see a positioning mistake around fire it's much easier to show the players that mistake um through like a gif or whatever or through a screenshot then trying to communicate it to them with words. And it's also much easier than getting to do VOD review because players hate VOD review, um, which is why these recording little moments thing, I think this is something that I didn't do enough of in my career, which I should have. It's something that Ro definitely um, was ahead of me on. Seems like a really nice thing to do. Um, another important thing to, to know is the way that you give feedback during the week, during scrims and trying to make it so the way you give feedback feedback is productive and not just kind of saying, hey, you messed this up. Um, so for example, I guess like you could say, hey, we didn't hit a single Vulcan all that game. It's going to be some pretty bad feedback uh, delivered poorly anyway. So what you're going to say instead is, hey, when we pick Vulcan, we really need to make sure that 
um, our front line is on the same page as our back line. We're forcing beads and we're playing off that and we're making sure to call our CC well so that we can use that CC to fire off the Vulcan Ults Prime. I thought you were um, using your ult a little bit too freely in that sad. Rather, you wait for setup from Variety and Frezzy, you know, that kind of thing. That kind of feedback is much better than just saying, hey, we're missing a lot of Vulcan Ults. <laughs> um, okay. I've done a little bit of the preparing for matches section already with showing that we keep records um, of scrims and things like that. Before a match, um, you want to go... I'm just going to show this because I had a look at it earlier on. It was funny. This is what we had for <laughs> Luminosity, apparently. We had all their picks that they'd played. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. Who's not good? Who's the mid laner for this team? Was it Oceans? I don't know. This is Bobby. This is Weekend Kiki. Not good. This is uh, Clout or Vetium, I guess. I'm not sure who their mid laner was at this stage, but uh, yeah, apparently we didn't have a whole lot of respect for them at the time. But, you know, you would have um, their drafts for each set ready. Uh, this is probably a bad one to use. Let's use a, a team where we have much more in-depth uh, notes. So this would be the notes we'd have before we go into a matchup against these against NRG. I would have updated that. I guess we played them this week. We 2 owed them. Uh, get owned. Um, but before going into a set against the team, you would make sure you have all their picks and bans, what they've played recently, what they've uh, what they've picked most, what they've picked together. Have all their stuff here for discussing before you go into your pick and ban strategy. Um, and then before your matchup against them, you'd get your team together and you do some draft sims. I don't know why this is so bare. Normally I would have more info here than this. I typically didn't uh, want to draft a full five man comp a lot of the time, not for every draft anyway. Your bottom two, you would often leave blank and your picks three, you would see. It might depend on what the enemy team picks. There's so many gods in Smite and, and you can't typically, at least when I was coaching, people picked such different things from week to week it was really hard to do a full 10 god uh and at this point it was only eight bands 10 god eight band draft and get it all right um but you would go through and, and do the important band scenarios and pick scenarios that you thought might happen and make sure that your team was getting the upper end in those um in those trades you shouldn't be doing this all on your own there should be a team effort players understand matchups better than you understand what they want to play into into what better than you do um and so they should be providing input for this i would always want the whole team to be there for pick and ban sims and, and prep for games um and then once you've done this prep you go into the game you have this all written down players are all aware of it you chat through it as you go through picks and bans you say we said we're going to ban this we're going to ban that blah 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 um you suggest picks and, and things like that to the players, but at the end of the day, it comes down to them on what they want to play. Typically, especially like jungler picks, bottom two, the junglers just have so much insight into what's going to work where um, in this situation, so much more than you. Um, and so you want to just let them decide what's good into the enemy comp. Um, little things that you should, in my eyes, focus on during picks and bans are going to be like uh, pressure, um, so you want to make sure that you have a good balance of pressure across the map, make sure that you're not just losing every lane and every kind of grouping through the early game, because that's one way to just lose the game for you um, and make sure that your team isn't forgetting kind of niche counter picks and things like that, like a Wheelix, Gab, Ares. You want to make sure that you're always considering anything that really fucks your comp uh, coming into the bottom two bands, especially. Um, so, yeah. I think that's enough of the stuff you would do on prepping for matches uh, and the, the picks and bands at the start. During matches, I would take notes similarly to how I did in scrims, but uh, I wouldn't typically communicate those things to the team as much during those matches. You would focus on across like a best of five or a best of three. You might look at how the enemy team's starting, communicate that to your team. Anywhere they're having ward hotspots, communicate that to your team. Um, during the game, quite often you have a bit more time, especially if you're losing and it's like a slow burn to consider draft adjustments and to write that down and to come back into the booth with your team after the game already with a plan there for the next game. 
uh, and communicate all that. You don't have a lot of time between games to communicate with your team, so you've got to try and be concise there and only communicate the important things. Um, yeah, so that's we're up to game day now. The game day is happening. Um, and I guess the next bit is that I was going to chat about which is probably the final bit I'm going to chat about is like kind of mental coaching and conflict resolution, which is something I didn't feel I had to do too much of uh, in my time as a coach. Uh, Biggie and I asked Biggie about this, especially because I know Biggie um, has done a decent amount of this. And this is something that he's strong on. Um, and he said he, he gave me a, a good little paragraph on on some bits, which I might put down below if he's fine with that. I think he should be fine with that. Um, <clears throat> no, but he said something that's really important is knowing your players and how to approach them. Uh, different players need to be approached about problems and conflicts in different ways. Sometimes you want might want to let player X go away and stew, whereas player Y, you might want to speak to them straight away and, and let them get it out of their system. Um, it just depends. Knowing your players in that aspect is really, really important. And having your players respect you as well is another thing that Biggie definitely emphasized um, making sure, like, if your players don't respect you, your opinions on Smite, your ability to to help them win, then there's no point. There's no point in you speaking to them. You know, there's no reason for you to be there at that point. The players have to respect you and have to um, understand that you're there to help them win, um, and that you're you're doing that, and that you are helping them win. You know, um, really, really important to have players who respect you. Um, in terms of Making arguments and providing solutions. Um, Biggie was saying that it's important to sort of find the line between discussing a misplay or arguing for the sake of being correct or, or to avoid bruising your ego. You've got to be able to know when to drop things and when to agree to disagree with players and things like that and when to get players to agree to disagree or how to get them to come to... Um, an amicable agreement at the end of an argument. You know, it's important to, to make sure everybody's on the same page, but still that, to make sure that everybody feels comfortable chatting about everything. I think I was pretty lucky in the teams I was on. We never had um, big disagreements and never had big fallings out or players that were pretty fucked off each other on the regular. I think playing with that Obey core in particular, I was very, very lucky to play with Nate, Prime, and Twig for as long as I did. Um, they were just very adult which is great which is not something you get on every smite team uh, for sure i know like i hope Mills doesn't mind me saying this but when he first came into the team he was very young and uh, didn't respect me and was pretty annoying to coach but he grew out of it pretty quick especially for somebody young so young i think he ended up being a a really great player to to work with in the end so but yeah that's it i hope i've covered everything i don't know i just spoke i was very much havering towards the end even with notes I end up havering 23 minutes of smite coach uh, verbal diarrhea. Sorry for that uh, terminology. But uh, yeah, let me know if there's anything else you'd like me to touch on. Maybe at some point we could do like a fake coaching session of like a of an SPL game or something and talk about how I would um, how I would walk through a set and what I would be doing for a team. But now I got to go stream. So thanks everybody for watching. Uh, I'll try and get some more YouTube content out soon. Probably a video around. Uh, what I think is going to affect the SPL and the patch coming up on Tuesday. So, yeah, hope you're having a great weekend, and I'll see you next time. Bye.